This week on IUP News Center, a local inmate vandalizes Indiana County Jail. Also, Tom Wolf visits the IUP campus. Plus, your latest updates in sports and entertainment right here on the IUP News Center. Welcome to IUP News Center. I'm Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. A sprinkler head was ripped from the ceiling of the Indiana County Jail on Wednesday, October 22nd. 26 year old inmate Desmond Michael Johnson, who is facing drug and firearm charges, tried to injure the correctional officers with the sprinkler head. According to state police in Indiana, Johnson became angry and destroyed a fire sprinkler system. In order to control the inmate, a jail special operations team was called out to remove the sprinkler head. Although there were no injuries, damage was estimated at $5,500, which included cleanup costs, water damage, repair of the sprinkler system, and inspection of the plumbing system. Johnson was charged with assault and institutional vandalism, and the preliminary, preliminary hearing is scheduled for November 3rd. A New York man is facing charges of sexual contact with a 14-year-old Indiana girl. Justin Hoffert of Dermahill, New York, had been in contact with a young girl for at least a month. The 24-year-old allegedly picked up the young girl near her house and took her to the Indy Park Apartments in Burrell Township. Here, the two engaged in sexual activities. Justin is now at the Indiana County Jail on $25,000 bail. His hearing is going to be held on October 29th by Judge Daniel George. Democratic nominee for Pennsylvania, Governor Tom Wolf, visited IUP on Saturday, October 25th. IUP was the last stop on Wolf's campaign of the other 14 state-owned schools. We're making a decision as to whether we want to keep doing what we've been doing or do we want to do something different. 2014 is also a chance to affirm who we are and what we want to do, Wolf said to a crowd of about 75 supporters. He also stated, I don't like where we've gone with education in Pennsylvania. Everything is wrong with where we are in education. It's not a priority here and that is wrong. Throughout his speech, he stressed the importance of education and how students should not have to suffer from all this school debt. The election will be held on November 4th. An increase in taxes may soon be underway. Indiana Council is deciding on a small tax increase for fire protection. The president of the Indiana Fire Association said a new fire station in the downtown area will reduce response times to fire alarms, help recruit firefighters, and possibly lower in fire insurance premiums for property owners. The IFA requested $1 million, while the Council's, council's Administration Committee recommended half a million dollars. The request was made after the decision to move and build a new multi-million dollar station downtown was implemented. IFA President Bill Simmons said the present station on Water Street is only big enough to hold the company's vehicles. The council meets on November 4th to decide whether this request will be included in the 2015 budget. Now here's Kelsey with a field report on National Writing Month, followed by a short break. Kelsey Brunick here reporting for IEP News Center. November is National Novel Writing Month, or NaNoWriMo for short. There are many ways for IUP students and the Indiana community to participate in this month-long project. National Novel Writing Month was something that was started over 14 years ago, and the basic premise of it is that you take someone who maybe might not write for the whole rest of the year, and they write a, a novel that's considered 50,000 words or more during the month of November. So for those 30 days of November, you have to write the equivalent of about 1600 words a day to keep up with that piece and it's just basically for people who otherwise can't find time to write it gives them a challenge and something that they want to experience with a bunch of other people and it lets them express themselves creatively and get a lot accomplished. IEP students actually have a couple different option, options to participate this year. Um, basically what you need to do first is go to the National Novel Writing Month website, which is nanorimo.com, and you sign up for a username and password, and then you can set your location, and it puts you into a forum where you can see the local events that are happening. 
Indiana NaNoWriMo participants can go to the artist's hand or commonplace coffee shop whenever they need a space to work or want to meet up with other writers for inspiration. The Writing Center on campus is also a great resource during NaNoWriMo. So the Writing Center is a come right in location, which means that we provide a space for writers to come in and work on their novel during the month of November. NaNoWriMo participants can use the Writing Center as a distraction-free writing place, and we can use our computer lab during all of our normal hours. You can also meet fellow participants by signing up on our bulletin board. And if you're stuck in the middle of your novel, we have plot bunnies available on the bulletin board to get you moving. Dr. Craig from the English department is actually making NaNoWriMo part of her novel writing class for the month of November. Using NaNoWriMo in my class as a way to help students focus and generate work. I really wanted students in the novel writing class to have a place where they could log their stuff, they could see how much they're doing, they would have a goal to work towards. Because I think one of the hardest things when people say, I'm writing a novel, is that they sort of lose momentum and it's a structured way and a goal to sort of try to achieve. So I, students have, in the first part of my class, they've done some reading of novels, they've thought about and structured and outlined what they want to write, and they just set goals for November, they're going to work on their writing, they're also going to meet in groups, like support groups. Zach Merritt is one of the students in Dr. Craig's novel writing class. I decided to take the class because I wanted to develop uh, my uh, writing skills further. I don't know necessarily if I want to write a novel, but I know I wanted to develop character and setting. That's something that I've had a problem developing in the past, and I wanted to explore further with this course. If you're interested in participating in NaNoWriMo, but are nervous about achieving your goals, here is some advice from the experts. The best advice I have for NaNoWriMoers, if that's a word, um, is to not give up. I just tell people if you have a bad day or a busy day, because a lot of the students who are doing this are also in the middle of final projects and classes and Thanksgiving break and just all kinds of stuff going on, make, up, make it up the next day. Or do less than you think you can do, or make sure you at least do one sentence a day, and let that be sort of how you define success. I think it's too, too difficult to just say, okay, 50,000 words, I do it or I don't do it. If you get 35,000 words, it's a lot more than most people do. Some advice I have for participants are keep goals, set goals for each day, use the resources that the actual NaNoWriMo site has for you, and find people who are doing NaNoWriMo to keep you moving. So if you have friends doing it, you sit down with them and you both just write. Uh, the best advice I can give is don't judge yourself while you're writing. Um, because if you do that, you start to question what you're writing and you start to question why you're even doing it. But if you just kind of keep going and you don't edit and you just let your thoughts out there, yeah, you're going to get some stuff that isn't top quality, but you might get some things in there that are real gems that you can keep or revise or turn into a completely new idea that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. For more information about NaNoWriMo, visit the official website or stop by the Writing Center in Iker Hall. This is Kelsey Brunick for IUP News Center. Welcome back to the IUP News Center. On Sunday, many of the United States and British troops were pulled out of Afghanistan. This comes after 13 long years of U.S. troops being stationed overseas. After all the international troops were, are withdrawn by year's end, Ashra Garni will be in charge of dealing with most issues almost unaided. This comes with a cautious mindset being that 80 to 90 percent of the country consists of major opium fields. The Afghan military have recently been in feud with the Taliban over these fields. With that being said, the United States government worries that the Afghan government will not be able to hold off the Taliban from taking over their rule. This past week, IUP celebrated International Education Week, a collaboration of the U.S. Department of State and U.S. Department of Education 
to promote programs that pre prepare Americans for a global environment, as well as encourage students from abroad to study in the United States. IUP offices and businesses from Indiana community collaborated together to promote cross-cultural understanding and appreciation in the community. This week started from the 18th of October with Noche Latina, Spain and Latin America, the fusion of two cultures, and ended with India Day, which consisted of dinner and performances to entertain guests. The event was open to both students and the Indiana community. Indiana native Tawny O'Dell is receiving great reviews on her fifth novel, One of Us. Set in a fictional Western PA, One of Us is O'Dell's first psychological thriller. The New York Times called O'Dell's work a fearless exploration of the line between mental illness and true evil. Tawny O'Dell's work as an author has gone on to be recognized by the Oprah Winfrey Club Book Club and to possibly having her novel, Black Roads, turned into a film. The Indiana native had gone on to live in Chicago before returning to Pennsylvania, where she now lives with her family. She'll be making an appearance at home Center Public Library from 1 to 3, where her books will be available for sale and she'll be able to sign copies. IUP student organization Hawk Rock will be hosting a 12-hour dance-a-thon fundraiser Saturday, November 8th at the Memorial Fieldhouse. They are raising money to support hunger and homelessness in Indiana County. To register as a team of dancers or to volunteer, visit the Hawk Rock page on Crimson Connect. The 12-hour dance-a-thon will include music, games, performances, and fun activities. So come out and support your local community. The Secular Student Alliance will be hosting an Ask the Atheist Day, November 5th, from 12 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. in the Hub Atrium. The forum will encourage courteous dialogue between believers and non-believers alike. Now for a short break, when we return, more local news, followed by your weekly sports update and a field report by Kelly. Ballets, ballet meaning to tell a story through movement, not the genre of ballet technique. So it's a real challenge for our students and one that most college students don't get. Um, it's very unusual for a college setting to do the magnitude um, of Appalachian Spring, for example. And we did have to go through an approval process for that um, through the Copeland Foundation to get permission and approval to be able to do our own version of Appalachian Spring. We are so fortunate and so blessed that it is the uh, music faculty from our own department of music here at IUP um, that is um, just a, a plethora of talented 
musicians and a gift. It is conducted um, by Jack Stamp, Dr. Jack Stamp, and he is also the co-director of the project. Uh, very um, noted nationally and internationally talented man in the music field uh, who has come into rehearsals to help us find some of the uh, nuances in the music along with some of the very difficult counting in the music uh, and then the choreography and the directing on my end for the dancers. Um, we have 20 dancers in the, in the company and they are all double cast. They have um, one role in Appalachian Spring and then they have a separate role in Soldier's Tale. An evening of story legends in music and dance will be held in Fisher Auditorium Saturday, November 1st at 7 p.m. Welcome back to the IEP News Center. Do you miss home but have no transportation to visit your family? Your wishes have been granted. Enterprise Rent-A-Car is teaming up with IEP to help students, faculty, and staff. The new car share program will essentially let the customer borrow a car for a small price. This is helpful mainly for people under the age of 25 since it is almost impossible and extremely pricey to rent cars due to insurance reasons. An annual membership fee of $35 is required to be eligible. Standard plan rates run from $8.50 per hour or $55 a day. The first 200 miles are free and it costs 45 cents per additional mile. You will be able to choose either a Toyota Corolla or Volkswagen Jetta, located in the SW Jack co-generation parking lot. If interested, visit www.iup.edu slash iCard for sign-up instructions and promotional deals. An Indiana County man is facing 20 to 40 years in prison for pleading guilty to third-degree murder. James Alexander of Ernest was apparently lured onto a trail by Christopher Siles Giver, and from there Gregory Patterson proceeded to shoot and kill the young man. The killing was due to a previous heroin deal where Alexander cheated these two individuals. Sentencing is scheduled for January 20, 2015. With flu and cold season approaching, there are a handful of remedies doctors offer to help prevent the two of them. Aside from known cures such as getting plenty of sleep, cleaning household items, and eating healthy, Dr. Frank Lippmann says to eat plenty of zinc. Some foods that contain zinc are nuts and beans, while another is pumpkin seeds, which plenty of houses are, have around Halloween time with children carving pumpkins. He advises to get at least 25 grams of zinc a day for a few consecutive days. Another way to fit some zinc into your diet is replacing lettuce with spinach for meals. These are just a few ways to help prevent colds and the flu this coming winter. Now we are going to hand things over to Maurice for our latest updates in sports. Thanks, Bree. IUP is out of playoff contention after losing to rival Slippery Rock 31-21 at home this past Saturday. IUP struggled early, but was able to find a slight rhythm towards the end of the first half. Their momentum was short-lived, however, due to IUP's turnovers, including two late interceptions in the, in the second half. Quarterback Chase Hazlitt was under pressure for most of the game and was sacked eight times. This was his second straight 300-yard passing game, and he had three touchdowns, but his four interceptions led to a Slippery Rock victory. This loss was the second in a row for the Crimson Hawks, who dropped a 5-3 overall and 4-3 in the PZAC. The Crimson Hawks will be looking to bounce back next week at home against Clarion. The Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback Ben Roethlisberger set team records in touchdown passes, passing yards, and completions while leading his team to an exciting 51-34 win Sunday at Heinz Field against the Indianapolis Colts. Roethlisberger completed 40 of 49 passes for 522 yards and 6 touchdowns. The 11th year veteran not only won his, his 100th game in his 150th career start, he also join, joins Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Terry Bradshaw as the only quarterbacks in NFL history to win 100 games in 150 or fewer starts. The Steelers, the Steelers host the Baltimore Ravens next Sunday night. The Ravens, who beat the Steelers 26-6 on September 11th, fell to 5-3 after losing 27-24 to the Bengals. That's all we have today for sports. I'm Maurice Daniels. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks for the recap, Maurice. Now, here's Austin reporting on Sketchophrenia's upcoming meeting. Sketchophrenia, a student-run sketch comedy series airing on IUP TV, held a mandatory meeting Monday, October 27th, to discuss the rules and check up on progress. After the meeting, we had a chance to sit down with the director as she explained what the show was all about. Sketchophrenia, we are currently, I think, the only out of studio show here on the TV station. All the other shows are in studio or semi 
out of studio, but most of them are in studio. We primarily do skits. We started out like trying to do like improv and stuff like that, and we just figured out, you know, that doesn't work. So we decided we were going to go to more of an SNL type format and do skits instead. Yeah, a lot. Of, another thing that uh, is special about our show is like uh, that we use actors uh, because these are skits, and so it's not just like a host or two for the show. It's like I think for episode two we have like 20 different actors. Oh yeah, so like we have a lot of acting in there. And so like all of our actors are required to memorize like a three page long script in like two or three days. And so we, we work hard. <laughs> so you would think with like a comedy show with our type of sense of humor, we wouldn't be working that hard, but we work very hard. Almost like, you know, five or six days a week sometimes. So <laughs> we put a lot of effort into this. There you have it. Check out their sketches for yourself on IUP TV or go to YouTube and search username Sketchophrenia IUP. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Austin. We are going to take a short break, but when we return, more news followed by our entertainment segment. Welcome back to the IUP News Center. Phi Kappa Phi is hosting Concert for a Cure, a charity benefit concert where all proceeds go to pancreatic cancer research. The concert will take place Thursday, October 30th at 7.30 p.m. in the Hub Ohio Room located on IUP's campus. There will be performances by Wolves and Sheep's Clothing, Coastal Remedy, William Forrest, Float, DJ Chris Price, and the IUP Hawkapella. For only a $2 donation at the door, you can make a difference while enjoying a fun night out. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to support pancreatic cancer research. The bitter football rivalry between IUP Hawks and Slippery Rock blew up in flames Saturday, October 24th at our home stadium. Slippery Rock came out with the win, 31 to 21. The Indiana County Community Action Program will distribute food for Green Township from 10 a.m. to noon on October 29th at Commodore Fire Hall. People who are registering for the first time should arrive at the pantry 30 minutes early. And now, for your latest in entertainment news, Maya is here to give us the scoop. Thanks, Landon. According to TMZ, Jennifer Lopez is allegedly signing a Las Vegas residency deal at the Axis Theater at Planet Hollywood, the same place where Britney Spears is performing her Piece of Me show. The Bronx-born star will purportedly do a total of 72 shows, three times a week for 24 weeks over the course of one or two years. Potentially good news for fans of Fox's Red Band Society, the network has ordered four more scripts of the Wednesday night Glee Meets the Fault in Our Stars drama series. The move keeps the production's momentum underway should the network want to fully commit to more episodes. In renewal cancellation terms, such a decision typically means the network hasn't made up its mind yet on the show's fate. Well, that's all the entertainment news for this week. I'm Maya Cryer, back to you in the studio. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. On behalf of IUP News Center, I'm Landon Hara. And I'm Bree Spitzer. Make sure to tune in next week for more Grade A news. Good night.